So I will start off by introducing you to Roscoe and giving you some backstory on him. Roscoe is a three-year-old gelding that I picked up from the auction a couple of years ago as an untouched stud colt. He was not handled and he was not used to human contact. So that was our first step in the training process was getting him halter broke and leading and able to accept the basics. And since then, we've just basically been doing nothing major, trimming, grooming, all that kind of stuff, but nothing major training wise. The last couple of months is when we really started consistently working together about five to six days a week, getting him ready to start under saddle. And one of the biggest hurdles that we've had to overcome is his stickiness and his dullness. So Roscoe is the type of horse that you really have to get to the point where you've pretty much maxed out your pressure just to get him to move forward. And he's come leaps and bounds since then, so we've definitely made a lot of progress. But I, in the beginning, had to really, really, really push him hard just to get a couple of strides a lope. And I'm sure part of it had to do with his lack of stamina, but a big part of it was just his personality. He's got a very dominant personality. We've had to deal with a lot of ear pinning, bucking, squealing, trying to change directions when he was not asked to change directions. He's just had to learn to give up control and submit to the training process and allow me to be his leader. So that has been challenging, but we have made a lot of progress. Another thing he's had to learn is how to be soft in the halter and not resist pressure. He's the type of horse that when you would ask him for a bit more speed or push him a little harder, he would have a tendency to either blow up or try to do everything he could to evade you or pull you around or pull on the halter. So he's had to do a lot of learning about following a feel and being soft in the halter. And we've done a lot of different exercises to overcome them, including this one that I'm doing here. My goal for this video was not really to explain what I'm doing in every clip because that would take a long time. But what I'm doing in this clip, I wanted to give a little bit of an explanation because it's not an exercise that I've seen done a lot, but it's really useful. So what I'm trying to get him to do here is to just stay parallel to the fence in the direction that I asked him. And he was constantly switching directions without me asking him. So when he finally stayed in one spot and was not pulling on the lead rope, that's when I give him a release where you can see here. We did this exercise quite a few times until he got much better at it. One of my personal pet peeves is having a horse that's hard to catch. So when Roscoe appeared with that problem, I knew that problem had to get solved because I don't want to deal with a horse that's hard to catch. It makes me frustrated and I don't have time for it. So we made sure that we nipped that problem in the bud right away. And we didn't really have to do anything specific to get rid of it. Just our consistent training and working with different exercises and motivating him with pressure and release was really the key to getting rid of that problem. So I'm happy to say that Roscoe is no longer hard to catch. This right here is just a clip of me teaching him how to ground tie for the first time.
We've also had to do a lot of work on desensitizing. He's not always been the type of horse that's, I wouldn't say spooky, but just really looky and nervous. Whenever you would lead him around in a strange area or even just around the yard, somewhere that wasn't his pasture, he was always just kind of looking around, worried about his surroundings. So I wanted to make sure that we got him good and desensitized before we put the first ride on. I wanted to make sure that he was okay with sudden movements, with loud noises, um, things moving fast, flapping around him, all that kind of stuff. Just to make sure that he was good with all that and wouldn't panic if something happened when I did ride him. So we did a lot of work with the flag, waving that thing like a crazy mad woman. And we did a lot of work with tarps, whips, dressage whips, lariat ropes, the lead rope. I got him leading by front feet. I got him okay with me having the rope around his back feet. I would hold it there until he stopped kicking. I roped his flank, I roped his belly, I roped his head. I got him used to me just throwing the rope around him, having the rope drag off of him. We got him used to going over barrels. I got him used to going over cavalettis, jumps, poles, tarps, basically anything I could think of. And when I first saddled him, I also got him used to this weird little straw guy that I made, some kind of human looking thing that he would be used to having on top of him. Another really helpful exercise that we did in our training process was I taught him to come to the fence. So this was an awesome tool for getting him used to someone being above him and being able to desensitize him from above. I could get on his back and rub him all over with the safety of the fence, knowing that I could grab onto the fence and get off him anytime I needed to. And it was just a really great tool. It helped a lot with his confidence and mine. In a second here, I'm going to show you a clip of the first time that I put my guy Marty on him. Marty is my guy that I made out of an old pair of coveralls and some straw. And that was his first ride on him. And this is what he thought. It didn't take him very long to get used to Marty rubbing all over him and touching him in all the areas of his body. He was able to relax and accept it and all was well. As I said before, Roscoe has shown me he has a tendency to buck. Roping his belly and his flank has been a really valuable tool in our toolbox for training him because I wanna make sure that I don't have any of this buck left in him before I ride him because I know I am not a bronc rider and I don't really feel comfortable riding anything too much more severe than a crow hop because I don't feel like I have the ability to stay on anything too crazy. And I don't want to get hurt. I've gotten hurt before. I'm sick of getting hurt. And I just want to make sure that we get this sorted out before we get on to riding so that my confidence stays intact and his too and everything goes smoothly and all that jazz. I've had to do a fair amount of work with him in hand, getting him used to moving and being soft in the halter at the same time. He had a tendency to throw that head in the air, bob his head, jerk the halter, jerk the rope out of my hand. So we've had to do a lot of work on softness 
and being able to ask for speed while keeping him soft. I took my sweet time to finally get to that first ride. I waited until I knew for sure that he was ready. And really the first ride just consisted of me getting him used to me jumping around beside him and getting him used to my weight in the stirrup. And then I got on him and I flexed him both ways until I got some softness out of him. And then after that, I asked him for a couple of steps both ways with his hips until he was soft and a little bit more responsive to my leg pressure. And that's really all we did on the first ride. I was super, super happy with that and I didn't want to push too hard. Like I said, he's a challenging horse and I didn't want to ask for too much too soon. So our second ride was much more eventful. We were able to trot. I was really going to be just happy with it being able to walk forward, but he showed me he was ready for trot, so we did trot. And he was really awesome. He was super soft, really responsive. I didn't have to raise my leg pressure at all, and he did really awesome. I'm super happy with how he did on a second ride. So this is where we are at now, and I will keep you guys updated on where we go from here.